things keep happening to me that I first experienced back in the 1990s. I did mention it in my first Life on the Rail videos, but I'll just touch on it a bit more in this one. Before we do that, we'll just make sure this train's secure and then go in the train to make a cup of tea. We've got about 40 minutes here, and that should be loads of time to chat about this. And while the kettle's boiling, we can watch the trains go past. If there's any management watching, it only took me 10 minutes to make this video. The rest of the time I spent reading my rule book. Whatever that means. Whether that's reading the rule book, reading the rule book, or reading the rule book. Mm, look at the buffers on that. And that's another subject completely. Today we're talking about loops and being stuck in them. I find myself stuck in loops quite a lot these days and that's probably a little surprising given the work I do. So what happened recently first happened to me back in the 90s. You arrive in the loop, contact a signaller to be told the words that every freight driver knows. Yes mate, one to come past. And that normally gives you about five to ten minutes to sort yourself out. After securing the train, your first thoughts are normally, is there a bush big enough for me to have a P behind? You check the signals and you've got a red in the loop and the main line is off. Which normally affords me the opportunity to get the camera and take a picture from a position of safety, obviously. On this occasion, there was an access gate literally right next to the engine so I took the opportunity to walk through it up onto the bridge to take my photo. Having taken the picture, I then strolled back to the engine, safe in the knowledge that nothing yet had passed me. So you get back on the engine, get your flask out, make a cup of tea, still waiting for something to gun past you. Then you look up and the signal's green. And then you start to think to yourself, why is my signal green? Nothing's come past me. <laughs> then you think, well, if it is green, how long has it been green? Well, never mind. We'll just get going. So that was the first time that happened to me. And I didn't know whether to tell anybody or to say anything. It was some months later when I was with a group of other drivers and somebody mentioned that it had happened to them. And I thought, great it's not just me then and strangely i was watching a british transport film from the 1960s on youtube a couple of days ago and a similar sort of thing happened to the driver on that video that video was called the pain train i'll leave a link in the corner and in the description so what happened recently i arrived into the loop contacted the signaller and said we're here for more than an hour it's pointless going right early because i've got relief at the next point and that person won't be there until right time anyway so i took the opportunity to collect my things go into the train have some drink and some food and a bit of a relax 15 minutes before we was due away I, something was niggling at me and I took the opportunity to lean out of the window to have a look down the side of the train. What did I see? Wally, having a pee. No, no I didn't. I saw a great big green signal staring back at me. Oh well, there goes dessert again. Get off the train, get back on the engine, have a word with the box, get going. Well, I suppose it makes a change from burnt pizza. I might. And to answer another question, did it happen here where we are today? No. And I'll not say where either. However, if there are signalmen watching and you've had a sig train sat in a, a loop for some time and then pulled the signal off and it hasn't moved, you probably know. <laughs> anyway, time's cracking on and there's another train about to go past, which isn't the one that I have to follow. It's the one after this. So I'll get me tea, get back on the engine, and make sure it doesn't happen again. Well, not today anyway. <laughs>